Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to my new video. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I achieved this result with my portrait work. Now this is the edited version here and you can see the original version here. Now I'm not going to be really going over how I took this photo or the lighting I used, I'll describe what lighting I used but I won't be showing uh, exact settings and stuff like that. And um, most of this will be me just showing you how I edited it. So you can see on the original photo here, you can still see the umbrella I used in the top left hand corner. Now I used one speed light for this photo, which was a Canon 580EX2, and I shot it through this plain white umbrella. Okay, so if we just quickly reset that to the original, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is adjust our white balance slightly. Uh, this was just a little bit off, so if we just set it to auto, it should be close enough to what we're looking for. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just bump up the exposure very slightly, and these are just the settings I used. Obviously, if you have a different photo, um, you're not going to be able to copy my settings. I'm just going over it so you get an idea of what I did to it. So then what I'm going to do is bring down the highlights to help eliminate some of these highlighted parts on his face and body. Then I'm going to actually bring up the shadows to help flatten out the image a little bit, then bring up the whites and bring down the blacks. And you can see the effect we're getting there. Everything looks a whole lot more kind of contrasty already. And we're well on our way to that look. Okay, now moving down to clarity. This is going to help a hell of a lot. And I'm going to set mine to around 70. And you can see that just really helps bring out all of the details all around the picture. Okay, so now moving down to vibrance. I'm going to bring that up to about 15. And then bring down the saturation in return to help desaturate the image and give a bit more of a darker look. So then we're going to skip over tone curves, hue saturation luminance, split toning. And we're going to go down to detail. So now what I'm going to do is use the same settings I use in all of my pictures, which is 70, 1.5, 10, and 20. And then we're going to not add any noise reduction because as you can see, I shot this at ISO 50, so there shouldn't really be any noise whatsoever. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the base adjustments. Now we're going to move on to adding some adjustment brushes in. So let's click that new button here. And the first thing we're going to change is his hair. So I'll just reset this like so. And all I'm going to do is bring up our contrast to about 20 and bring down our saturation. Now, obviously, you don't have to bring down the saturation. You don't even have to really do this. I'm just doing it from what worked for this photo. Then I'm going to bring up the sharpness just to help sharpen out his hair and add a bit more detail into it. So then I'm just going to roughly paint over it. It doesn't need to be too exact. So that's looking pretty good right there. So now let's click this new button here and create the second one. Now what I'm going to do is brighten up his eyes just a tiny bit. So we're going to add one stop of exposure like that. And then we're going to go down and just bring up the shadows a little bit just to help eliminate some of them around the eye. And we're going to bring that up to about 15. So then what we can do is just remove our saturation and sharpness adjustments and then just get a smaller brush. And we can zoom in if we want and go up to where his eye is and just paint around his eye slightly. And then hold Alt to bring up your eraser brush and just clean that up a little bit. And then you can paint over this one as well if you want but we'll make this one not as noticeable since it is meant to be quite a bit darker. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is create a new one once again. And since raising our clarity up, we're just going to reverse that on his face to get rid of some of these harsh details. So I'm going to bring this down to about zero. I'm going to drop the contrast to help flatten out his face a bit to about negative 15. Then I'm going to drop the clarity right down to about negative 30 to help reverse that effect, like I said. Then what I can go ahead and do is drop the sharpness as well to about negative 20 to again just soften up the photo a little bit. Then finally we can just remove our shadows. So now that we've done that, what we can go ahead and do is just pretty much paint over his face. And you can see it's just helping remove some of these highlights. It's helping smooth out his skin and it's just making it look a little bit better. Uh, so there we go. There's his face all fixed up and we're going to create one last adjustment brush. Now this one is pretty much going to enhance all of these details here on his body and try and bring out a bit more of a muscly look on his chest. And then what I'm going to do is bring up the sharpness to about 20. Then I'm going to drop the shadows. Now the reason for this is because you can see some parts like under his collarbones here are all in shadows and I really want to bring those shadows down to make it look like they're popping out a bit more and make him look a bit more muscly. So then we're going to bring up the clarity to about 30 to help enhance the details. Then I'm going to bring up the contrast to about 30. 
and then the highlights to about five. So then once we've done that, what I'm just going to do is paint over his chest area here. And you can see that's kind of just really helping to find these details. And then once we've done that, what we're going to do is take this over into Photoshop and do some final touches. So I'll just unpause this when I'm into there. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop. Now I'm using CS5, but this should be easily translatable into other versions. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this umbrella and pretty much make the background completely black. Now to do this, what I'm going to do is pretty much duplicate our background layer for one and create a new layer. And what I'm going to do now is just grab our brush tool, make it completely black and paint over this. And I'll just pretty much paint over the entire image for starters and get rid of this plant down here in the corner since this was just shot in my lounge room. And there we go. And now what I'm going to do is just enable a mask on that layer by clicking down to here. Now what we can go ahead and do is keep our color on black, reduce our brush size and paint over his face. And you can see we're kind of bringing him out of the shadows and it's quite a cool effect happening. So once we've done that and just paint around his body and take your time on this, you can see there's a slight bit of color here coming in from the background it may take you just a couple of minutes to go over this with really nice uh, detail and timing if this is the kind of effect you're going for. So then once I did that, what I'm going to do is we'll just hide that layer for now. And then I went onto our duplicated layer and I just did some retouching. So the retouching I did on this was I just grabbed our healing brush tool here and I just healed over some of these scars you can see here and some of these little marks that, you know, are just on his face. And let's just say that's all the retouching we're going to do. So the thing I did after that was just help enhance some of these dark spots again to give that look of muscle. So to do this, we'll just stay on our duplicated layer here and I'll just grab something like the burn tool. Now I'm at 15% exposure and what I can go ahead and do is just kind of paint over where these markings are and the places we want to be a bit darker. And you know, this you might notice it now that I'm doing it and you might notice it that you know it's been done. But if someone just saw this photo for the first time, there's no way they'd be able to tell unless they had a really close look that that's been kind of Photoshopped like that. Now again, take your time with it. You don't want to rush something like this because then people will spot some flaws and it won't look as good as it should be. So as you can see, that is how I created this effect and edited it. So I hope this helped anyone who was wondering. And if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit that like button. You can check out my previous tutorials on the screen now and consider subscribing if you enjoyed the video. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.